Hello, good morning, afternoon or evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. Good more aftive. Hope you're having a good one. This video we would like to talk about self-esteem. What is it? How does it work? Now this is a particularly interesting topic. Lots of people write about it. There's lots of literature about it. Lots of books based on it. And yet you've got notable individuals like Jordan Pearson <laughs> claiming that it doesn't even really exist. So what's that all about? Let's get into it. But when I first started investigating self-esteem and self-confidence and self-worth and things like that, I wondered, well, what exactly are they? What's the difference between self-confidence and self-worth? And what does self-respect fit into the picture? And what does self-esteem have to do with all of this? And and in investigating the literature, so it became fairly obvious to me that people mean different things by the same term. Sometimes a writer will be writing about what seems to me like self-confidence and they're calling it self-esteem. And then other people are using self-worth to mean self-esteem. And so it just seemed to be a bit of a jumble that people were using the same terms to mean different things. Somebody was saying self-confidence when they meant more like self-worth. How does the person feel about themselves? How do they value themselves? So, so one day I went into an academic bookshop and decided, okay, I'm really going to find out what are the definitions of self-esteem. So how do they all fit together and do they fit together? Are they the same thing? I looked through the all the literature I could find and there was no clear specific agreed upon definition that I could find. So with my background as an engineer and because I, I first came into electronic engineering and then computer engineering, so I look at things from the perspective of an engineer and so the lack of definition really horrified me. I thought, how can they talk about all this when they're all talking about different things or they're not even sure they're talking about the same thing. And so I just said, okay, I'm going to try and work out my own angle, just like I would do with a, a computer system that I was getting to know. I would, if a part of it's not documented, then I'll have to figure it out myself. And that's how I've approached the thing. So and it seemed to me that it, one of the easiest ones to define is self-confidence. Do you have confidence in yourself? And that's about skills and abilities. Can you achieve the goals that you're intending to do. To me then self-confidence becomes feeling good about your skills and abilities in the particular field of activities because you can be confident in one area and not confident in another. So it's a mixture of skills, abilities, experience in a given area gives us confidence in that area. However, self-worth is how do we feel about ourselves? Do we like ourselves or not? It really boils down to that. Does someone like themselves? Do they feel good about who they are? Confidence and skills and abilities doesn't necessarily give us self-worth. It can add to it because these things are all interlinked and interconnected. But it isn't necessarily the same thing as being feeling good about yourself because you may have a skill and ability in a given area, uh, like in your job, for example. But if your relationships are not working well, you may be great at something, great at a skill, but not feel good about yourself. You know, somebody may have a very good artistic ability and or a skill in a job, and other people rate them highly because of it, but they don't really like themselves. They, they may or they may not. That can, that can help them like themselves because other people like them or value them. But if they don't value that aspect of themselves that much, they're not going to see themselves as worthy. They may be very good at something, and uh, but never actually feel good about themselves being able to do it. For example, um, I've got good technical skills and I'm quite good with things like electronics and computing. I'm, I do fairly well at that kind of thing. But it doesn't have much to do with how I feel, whether I like myself or not. It's, it's just a gift that's come with the DNA. It's not something I've, I've made. You know, it's like, it's just, okay, I'm good at that stuff, but it's, I didn't do anything to get good at it. <laughs> it just, I just am pretty good at it. And I do stuff with it, which means I get better at it. But I don't, it doesn't really reflect much on my self-value. And if people value me from that angle, I, I kind of feel a bit uncomfortable at that. Like, well, that's not really who I am. Who I am is what I make out of the gifts that life has given me. These are just gifts that life has given me. And um, so I'm good at some things. I'm not so good at others. But it's not really to do very much with my core sense of value as a person. So I could be doing really good at my job, but 
my primary relationship is not working very well or whatever, and I need to up my people skills or whatever. So I'd have this mix of reasons to feel good about myself, reasons not to feel good about myself, but it really gets down to my core way of relating to myself, more that I have a good relationship, uh, feel a sense of value of my core self, even when I'm not doing my job well, because self-worth can carry us through even when we're not very good at a particular thing. So self-worth would be feeling good about who we are, just feeling good about ourselves and liking ourselves. And self-confidence is feeling good about skills and abilities and, ex and having gained experience in a particular aspect of life. And then there's another thing which would be, which I think of as self-respect, and that's having a sense of purpose and direction in life. So if we've got a sense of purpose and direction, that can carry us through many things. Like if you've got a strong sense of purpose, even if you're lacking in confidence, i.e. you don't have the skills and the abilities to achieve that particular purpose, it will get you going anyway. If that's a strong sense of purpose, you'll go ahead, you'll make things happen, you'll be going forward and you'll just be moving with it. It's mostly independent as to whether you like yourself or not. You're just going to do it anyway because you feel compelled to fulfill this purpose. It's such a strong driving force. And through that, you may gain confidence and skills and abilities and you gain self-confidence because you've because the, your sense of purpose has driven you into, into life and into connecting and engaging with life. And you may begin to feel better about yourself as well because you engage in going outward into life or you've um, developed a skill and you feel like, oh, I can do that. I can want to g gain a skill and I can gain it. So it makes you feel confident and it makes you feel self-worth as well because you feel good about you as a person and you also feel good about your skills and abilities. So you feel confident and you feel self-worth. So self-respect can keep us going, whether our skills are low or high, we still get the sense of, I'm here to do this thing, I'm out to carry this thing out, I'm here to achieve this goal, and, and I'm just going to get on with it. So I regard that as self-respect. And as I say, that can, that can push us into engaging with life to the extent that we do develop self-confidence, and even if that was lacking initially, and we do develop self-worth because we feel good about who we're becoming. We like the person we're becoming. And because if we're being cowardly and not doing anything, it's hard to feel good about yourself. It's hard to feel self-worth. You may have skills and feel confident, but it's hard to feel good about yourself because you're not living the life that you know you, you can be living. Well, well, I'm not really doing what I ought to be doing. I'm chickening out, really. And that can drain our self-worth. And then eventually that can seep into affecting our confidence as well. So I think in a way, self-respect is the primary thing. It's having a sense of purpose can help us in this, you know, develop and cultivate self-worth and self-confidence. Where does self-esteem fit into all of this? And I see self-esteem as an overarching, overreaching thing. It's an overarching thing. Or one way to look at it is like self-esteem is like a three-legged stool where one leg is self-confidence, another leg is self-worth, and another leg is self-respect. And getting those balance and mix allows the seat, <laughs> the seat of the stool, um, the three-legged stool, is self-esteem. It's what hangs it all together. And it, so self-esteem is what naturally arises when we've got healthy levels of self-respect, self-confidence, and self-worth. We become more than the sum of those parts and we have a sense of esteem. We feel good about ourselves, we feel good, generally speaking, about our interaction with others, and we feel good about, about life in, in general. So we're a good engagement with life, and another the thing that comes out of that, which is our skills, abilities, connection with others, relationship with other people. And so within healthy masculinity then, self-esteem is about getting firing in all cylinders, is about, is about getting yourself engage with a meaningful purpose and then overcoming the challenges and difficulties of developing the skills and abilities within that arena of life and then developing the, the relationship skills you need to interact with others in the forwarding of that purpose and, and out of that will naturally grow self-esteem as those different aspects of life come into balance and 
and are expressed in action in life. So you're engaged with life. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to become an, an extrovert. You might be naturally an introvert, but you're engaged with life whether in an extroverted way or an introverted way. Uh, if you're an introverted person, you don't have to become this outgoing extrovert. It's more about your engagement with your own sense of purpose and fulfilling that sense of purpose. Coming back to Jordan Pearson co comment in one of his videos that doubting that self-esteem actually exists. So I can see why he would do that because of lack of definitions um, and lack of clarity about what it is. But I think it, it does exist, but it's just many people are calling it different things. And so it creates this muddle and it's hard to get a handle on it. So in order to function in life, I came up with this model that works for me and that what I use and for defining and understanding self-esteem, self-respect, self-confidence, self-worth and how they interact, how they interrelate and having being really strong in one but weak in the other can take a person's character out of balance. And of course this all maps into the images I like to use for healthy masculinity which is the sword, which is a sense of purpose and direction and that relates to self-respect. So having sword energy can tend to lead the person to self-respect. The shield energy of Within, uh, within the masculine of, of protecting and providing helps to nourish self-worth. The pen energy, the energy of intelligent creative activity helps to engender a sense of confidence of skills and abilities in life, of the, of the specifics of, in life. And uh, to be able to carry out the, the goal that's, that's driving us forward in life. I hope you've enjoyed this particular way of looking at self-esteem and self-confidence and self-worth and self-respect. Hope you get something out of it. There's other videos on the channel about healthy masculinity, different aspects of it, so you might want to check those out. Be you, be your best, be your best self. You're awesome. Go for it.